Hi everybody, my name's John Lacey. This is Coffee and Content, the weekly live stream about video, live streaming and content creation. Thank you so much for, for joining me today. We're going out live to all of the various places. So if you're watching live, let me know where you're coming to me from in the chat. Today, we're actually going to be looking at actually creating short form vertical video in TechSmith's Camtasia. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited to share that with you. Um, I hope you're having a great week and I hope you're having a good start to 2023. Um, I'm really curious to see what you've been up to in terms of your video live streaming and content creation. But of course, this is coffee and content. So we better start by actually drinking some coffee. That really hits the spot. Okay, so today we're talking all about uh, TechSmith Camtasia and how you might use it to uh, create vertical short form video. Obviously, uh, short form video is all the rage uh, with YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Reels, uh, and various applications. So I think it's really important that we consider this as an opportunity as part of your content creation. I'm not telling you you have to do this, but it might be something that's worth looking at. I know for me personally, uh, I, I seem to be getting a lot of views on my YouTube shorts more so than my traditional horizontal formatted videos. And I just, I, I think for a channel that's as new as mine, this is probably a really good opportunity to, to build some awareness. So that's, uh, that's a really good thing that we can, uh, it can explore. So let's talk about, uh, Let's talk about Camtasia. So Camtasia is at its core a uh, video editing software. Um, and there are plenty of video editing software options out there. And to be honest, I they, they all broadly have the same feature set. But the thing that is the superpower of Camtasia specifically is actually capturing your screen. So if you're making tutorial videos, if you're, uh, you know, sort of demonstrating something, it will, rec it can record you and and your screen. But not only does it capture the screen, it also captures the metadata. So there's all kinds of cool stuff that we can do, in terms of, uh, you know, actually capturing the motion of your mouse cursor and treating that separately. Uh, you can actually change how your cursor uh, appears within those recordings. So if you were a little bit all over the place, you can actually come in and uh, and smooth that out a little bit. You can make it larger, so you can increase the, the size of the cursor in, in Camtasia. Uh, you can also hide the cursor completely. So if you don't actually want it to be included, there are options to get rid of that as well. So that is really, really cool. So let's talk about actually recording in Camtasia. If uh, this is TechSmith Camtasia here on the screen, if I click the new recording option, there's a very good, uh, in fact, here we go. I'll just move this over to the screen that I'm sharing. So we have options to capture the screen and you can sort of specify which one of your monitors you're using, whether you're using um, a custom region. You can actually change whether you want widescreen or uh, you know, 1080p or 720, and you can even capture a square if you want. You, you can literally sort of resize these things to uh, different dimensions. We do also have the option to capture your your web camera or any any device that you treat as a web camera on your uh, computer. So I've got the the Camlink 4K, which is the uh, which is using the Sony ZV E10. Um, at the, at the moment, I'm using that for the stream, so I can't actually capture that here for the uh, the recording. But, you know, if I wasn't sort of already using that camera, I could certainly bring that in here. Additionally, we can think about our audio source. So again, depending on your setup, you may have a specific USB microphone that you want to capture. You might have something like the Rodecaster, which is what I've got here. You can also do things with uh, sort of virtual audio devices as well, if that makes sense. And you can actually capture the system audio as well. So once you've decided that's how you want to roll, um, you literally hit the start recording button, you'll get a countdown, uh, three, two, one, and you're ready to go. So I guess that the, the opportunity here is we can capture the screen, we can capture the audio, we can capture the video. And you might like to do these things all at once, or you might like to do these things separately. 
And it's one of those things that depending on the content of, of your video, you may want to do that separately or you may want to do it at the same time. Uh, often, if I'm looking at uh, the screen that I'm sharing, I won't be looking at the camera so much. So, you know, maybe I record the the screen share portion and my microphone and maybe I come back in and record uh, a little bit of me speaking directly to the camera as a bit of context for those actions. Um, but any combination of these uh, can work. So we'll talk about it a little bit later too, but uh, there is actually a narration option in here to, uh, in Camtasia when we come to edit. So if you find that operating the thing on the screen is sort of, uh, you know, as much as you can handle in that moment, you can certainly do that. You can write a script uh, or ad lib. Uh, and actually create the narration and you can actually just edit these things together so you can make sure that they're they're sort of timed up nicely so those are the uh the basics of the the, the capture and the recording so we have those options there now i spoke about this a couple of weeks ago but if you are recording specifically for a vertical format you really want to think about capturing, uh, or you really want to think about how you're capturing the the screen capture portion of that. So, um, I spoke about this recently, but I haven't actually had a chance to show you this. So I thought this graphic might be useful. So if you have the capability to actually change the orientation of your monitor, that is amazing. So I actually have some, and you'll have to forgive the the cabling on my desk. It is, a, it really is a mess. Let's be real, it's a mess, and I'm I'm not the the tidiest person in the world, but it is what it is. But for our purposes today, we I've got these uh these monitor arms, and they've got the the VESA mounts on them. So the great thing about that is it's actually relatively easy for me to t turn these around, so I can go from horizontal to vertical relatively easily. Once you do that, you can actually right click on your desktop for, for Windows users, go to your display settings, and then you can change the display orientation. So, uh, you know, you can go from landscape to portrait or portrait flipped. In this case, I'm using portrait flipped just because of the direction of the cabling. But, you know, wh whatever you can do uh, to, to operate that is up to you. But I think it's really great because Otherwise, if you're if you're just recording horizontally, and you can, it's fine, but you probably will need to crop things. You'll probably need to zoom in a little bit more. Um, and the other option, again, that I spoke about a couple of weeks ago was the ability to use Microsoft Power Toys and actually create a region that sort of... Um, it, it, it's essentially a snappable region. So you can create a, a section on your screen and you can very easily sort of... Um, uh, you know, m move your your content into that, and it will uh, it will snap to fit. So, in fact, if I, I'll just give you a, a let's let's hide this for a second. So again, this is Microsoft um, Power Toys, and this is a a free thing from Microsoft. You can download. It's kind of in beta. It seems to always be in beta, but um, I haven't found too many problems with it. So. If you do, uh, you can you can enable fancy zones. You can actually open up the the editor, and you you can specify which monitor you're using, and then you can create a layout. So again, we've done this previously, but like here is um, a, a screen for for vertical video that I've used previously. So uh, and this one as well. So essentially, you can see that um, you know those regions are actually set up specifically to fill up. Uh, it's not exactly um, 1080 by 1920, but it's it's a little bit smaller than that, but it's it's nice and close. So once that's in place, and again, I won't switch to that one right now because I don't really want to use it today, but you can literally drag this into the region you've set up and it will resize to fit. So keep that in mind because that is a really handy thing, especially if you can't actually, um, you know, switch the orientation of your monitor in that way. So again, this is Coffee and Content. My name's John Lacey. We're going out to various places today. So if you are out there in the chat watching live on YouTube or Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook or Twitch, uh, let me know in the comments where you're joining me from today. And, you know, what are you actually using to create your short form video content? I know a lot of people like using their phone. I'm not really a mobile creator. I love working with my desktop computer. I'm very nicely set up with my lights and my camera and my teleprompter and all of the things. So that's usually how I work. 
So if we go back to Camtasia, um, what we're going to do, let's, uh, you, you can sort of see a number of different um, projects that I've been working with. So let's open up this one. And I'll drink some coffee while this is happening. So this is Coffee and Content, the weekly live streaming uh, live stream about uh, live streaming video and content creation. My name is John Lacey. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're just having a look at how we might use Camtasia to uh, create short form video content. And I'm just loading the first version of my project right now. And again, I'm going to uh, just drag that into that region just so you can get uh, a better sense of what we're working with. So. This is actually a recording I did earlier in the week. Um, there's actually two parts of this, and I did do this in the, the Camtasia recorder. So um, first of all, before we actually even get to the content, it's important that we think about the size of our project. So if you can see this black uh, rectangle here, it's currently set to a pretty standard 1920 by 1080 format. We kind of want to reverse those numbers. So if we go to our file option and go to our project settings, you've got uh, canvas dimension options. And I don't think there actually is um, a, a vertical video one at the moment. I'm imagining that's something that TechSmith will incorporate for a future release. But right now we can go to the custom option and we just want to switch those numbers around. So we want a width of 1080 and a height of 1920. And again, if you uh, you know if you're creating square uh, video, you can just have 1080 by 1080. You can change these however you like. You can also have a uh, background color for your canvas. I'm not overly concerned about that. Uh, the other nice thing about Camtasia is that it will auto normalize loudness if you have this setting turned on. So if you've got reasonably clear audio, it's a good idea to include this um, on there. If your audio is maybe a little bit muddier, maybe it has a little bit of background noise, a fan or air conditioning, and, and you can't sort of treat that any other way, I'd probably turn that off just because it will increase the volume of everything. Um, but let's just go apply for the moment. So we've actually got our two recordings. So again, the, the screen that I recorded here and also me in front of my green screen. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to make sure that my my recording uh, of, of the screen actually fits the section. So I'm going to right click. I'll go to um, I'll go to scaled fit. There we go. That'll actually fill that section now. So that's that's better. We also want to uh, maybe just come in here and make this a little bit bigger. So this is actually the video of me. I am in a green screen. Um, I've, I've recorded this on the, the Sony camera. Um, I will show you how we can use the chroma key feature in, in Camtasia and actually crop some of this out. In fact, let's just crop it out now because I know we're definitely not going to want to have, you know, that scene of my clothes and wardrobe behind me. So I can just go and hold, um, I can click on this, uh, this button here, which is the crop option. You can also just hold down the alt key, which is actually the same way that this works in OBS Studio. So if you're working with that, that will make it a little bit easier to work with. And we can sort of, we can move this around. I'll probably bring in some, um, well, I may bring some branding um, template, uh, some branding elements in here later. But for the moment, I just want to maybe, uh, and, and again, I'm trying to resize that, but I've still got the crop on. So I've got to go back to my normal cursor and I can just drag this out. And, you know, we might, we might put this roughly here. Um... Okay, I'm just curious. And we've actually got a, a, a comment in the chat from LinkedIn. Hello all, I make all my social media posts with Camtasia. That's awesome, love to hear it. Thank you for, for joining us today. So again, um, what we wanna do, I guess the, the important thing, especially in terms of our short form content is that it's short. So one thing you may notice about this is that my project actually goes for 2 minutes and 47 seconds. That's way too long. There are some gaps in here that I want to delete, but I probably, you know, I did script this a little bit, but I probably wanted to say a little bit more than I than I really have time to say. 
But what we might do is if we actually go up to our view menu, we have the ability to show the marker track. So if I go to the marker track and I might even just zoom in a little bit. So you can zoom in and out of your timeline with these plus and minus buttons here, which is awesome. What I really wanna do, because I'm, and I'm thinking really in terms of my YouTube shorts, it really can't be more than a minute long. And in some ways it's probably better if it's even shorter again. But what I wanna do is I just wanna put in a bit of a marker to indicate exactly where I can't go beyond. So sort of at the, the one minute mark, which is just there. So with my marker track on there, I can just hit the plus sign in, in the marker element here. And that will give me a sense of, you know, where my limit is. And I should say too, like we're talking about short, um, short form vertical video, but another really cool thing about the, the marker feature is that if you're making a traditional horizontal video, you can actually use this to create chapters. And if you use the export option within Camtasia to send it to YouTube specifically, it'll include those time references so you can jump around uh, to the various parts of your video. And that's, you know, that's really, that's a great feature for YouTube. But you can certainly see that I've got this much space to work with and I've already blown that really rather dramatically. Um, so I will have to edit this down quite a lot. But that said, there are segments here that, um, you know, you can see there's a lot of uh, audio um, that's that's empty in my track. And I do want to cut them out. I do want to make them short and snappy. And I think that's kind of a thing that people are expecting on these short form video pl platforms. One thing that I did do, um, and I realize I'm not sharing the audio with you in this stream. You'll only hear me talking, not the video itself. But one thing I did do was I actually open this by saying, did you know how to uh, schedule an event in Restream. And ultimately what I did with this was I, I wanted to actually take that do you know section, cut it out and put it at the end of the video so that it loops a little bit, uh, a little bit nicely. So that's often a really engaging thing to do on TikTok and, and YouTube shorts and, and reels. You know, if they don't know, if you, you sort of had that loop and they, they may watch it several times, not realizing where it officially ends. And that, that could be a really cool thing for engagement. So let's talk about how we can actually edit our, our videos. So I guess, first of all, if we bring, I can, I can drag these, these, these waveforms up. And again, if you're working with audio, you can literally see where the, the waveforms are. So I can already tell that my video doesn't even get started until I say that, do you know? So I can grab here and drag, uh, dra drag my cursor back a little bit. And again, I, we, we have this really cool thing. I love this. It's one of my favorite things within Camtasia. It's called ripple delete. And if I you choose ripple delete, it will delete the section that I've actually highlighted here, but it will also move everything around the, the project. So if you watch this here, I'll go ripple delete It'll delete that and it'll actually move the rest of my elements right to the, the beginning of the recording. So again, I realize you won't be able to hear this audio as I hit play and you can use the, the space bar to hit play to do this. But I know that is sort of the section where I say, do you know? So again, what we can do, and I'm gonna do this for, for both of our tracks because I kind of want a little bit of consistency because I want, this to be essentially the same. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select both tracks. And I can actually split these. So there's a little icon here on the toolbar called split, and you can also use the keyboard shortcut S. So once I do that, I've got those two bits together. And what I wanna really do is move those to the end of the track. And the track goes for, for quite a while. So I might even, um, I might just actually cut those. I'm going control X. Then I'll move my, my cursor to the end here somewhere and paste those in. And I kind of know that that's going to be the last thing on my video. So no matter what else happens, it kind of needs to be just before this marker or maybe even further behind, depending on you know how long or short this ultimately needs to be. And again, um, in this case, because I, you know, I haven't used a ripple action, I actually have a little bit of a gap here at the beginning. So if I go control A to select all and just nudge that back to the very beginning of my timeline, I can do that. 
So essentially what we want to do, and again, I don't want to spend too much time on this and I've actually saved some different versions of this project. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really want to do this in real time because it'll take longer than the live session normally goes for. But essentially what we want to do is we want to sort of take out the bits we don't need. And some of those are just mistakes I've made in this presentation. Some of them are just gaps where I've been thinking or, you know, waiting for something to load. We, we kind of want to make this as short and snappy as, as possible. So again, we have two options. If we find a section that we want to get rid of, um, we can split it and split it again. And again, in this case, I probably want to do this for both of, um, both of these sections. So I can go split. And, you know, maybe I, I know that this is where I want to continue talking. Um, so I can do that over here and I can split. And again, the place it'll split is where, where your marker actually is. So this middle point here. So we can go split or S on the keyboard. And, you know, maybe we decide we don't want that section. So again, I can select both of them by holding down shift. And then I can right click and go to my favorite thing, ripple delete. So again, not only will it delete that section, but it'll move everything back. So I did sort of, I had an, and I should say too, this, this whole video is about uh, scheduling live events within Restream. Um, and I made a number of points. And to be honest, I probably made too many points here because they won't fit in my, my single minute. So I had to be quite ruthful. Uh, ruthless, I should say, um, and cut out quite a few sections here. So I guess that's a consideration when you're making short form video, you know, do you, how much do you actually intend to say um, and how much can you fit in there? So maybe I should have had a shorter script, but I guess the other thing too is with this longer script, if there's, uh, if there's a version of this, you know, I could, maybe this, this two minute 47 video, um, two minutes and 47 a second video could be, you know, three or four shorts, depending on whether they're sort of compelling enough to stand alone in that regard. So just a, just a few things to keep in mind. And the other nice thing is if you do go longer, you know, we can actually repurpose this into a, a longer form video. So maybe a traditional horizontal YouTube video. So you have options. Editing is kind of a superpower. And I'm, I'm really passionate about it and I, I love doing it. Um, and I know that's not for everything. If you if you watch the video and live streaming show with my co-host Sam Proof, he really doesn't enjoy it. He, he will tell you that he's good at it, but he doesn't enjoy doing it. So again, a lot of his activities are about going live and not having to, to edit. But I just feel like it's... A, and again, this might be a little controversial, but I just feel like my content is better when I do it on the desktop and I edit it in real software rather than on my phone. But that said, there are people out there that are doing amazing things on, on within various apps. So I, you know, whatever works for you, I just want to give you some options. So again, we can we can come in, we can delete all of the sections uh, that we want to, and you know, then we will actually move on to our uh, our next uh, version of this project. So. Again, I'm going to drink a little bit more coffee because this is coffee and content. And then we'll get stuck into the, the new version of this project. Hi, I'm John Lacey, and you're watching uh, Coffee and Content, the weekly live stream about video, live streaming, and content creation. Today, we're actually looking at uh, editing short form video into uh, in, within Camtasia. So, again, I'll just uh, share my screen. And this is actually a different version of this this project. So, once I've I've taken out. Um, <clears throat> I've sort of edited out the things that I want to edit out. I can actually come in here and make further changes and edits and adjust various things. So um, I guess the first thing, you know, you can see here, obviously I've got, um, I've got all these sections of me actually talking to the camera. Um, so what I can do, I kind of want to make sure that these stick together. So I'm actually going to select all of them and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go group, which you can also do with control G. So this will bring these together. So I won't accidentally move them out of sequence. Um, 
So I can I can certainly do that now. And I guess the one of the, uh, the most obvious thing about this particular project is that I'm in front of this green screen and I kind of want to remove that. So let me t show you how this works. So again, let's just uh, go to a part of our video. And if we go to uh, over here, we've got all our options for the, the various sections of Camtasia. You can also usually find them um, in the menu under tools. And they do have shortcuts. Uh, so if you want to memorize those, they can be quite useful. But essentially what I want to do is I want to find the visual effects. And in this case, because I've got my screen sort of um, a little bit smaller than usual, um, I know that they're actually hidden under these this more button here. So if we go more, you'll see we've got audio effects, we've got visual effects, we've got interactivity and captions as well. But for the moment, let's actually go to visual effects. And we have a whole bunch of different options here. And these, these things can be quite useful for, for different uh, things. So, you know, it, it's worth sort of getting in there and trying some of these options out. But the one that we really are most focused on at the moment is called Remove a Color. So if I drag this onto, onto my element, in this case, I've grouped them all together. So I'm dragging them onto the group. And over here in the properties, you can see that we've got the ability to remove a color. So if I click into the color, and grab my little eyedropper tool to select the color from the image, I can come over here and I can sort of select a color here. And that's actually pretty good. Like I probably don't need to do too much more to that, but what I will do is I'll sort of just drag my, my cursor around a little bit. And I should, I'll talk about that in a second. There is a place where I actually remove myself from the screen. And I'll talk to you about why I did that in a moment. But really, what we want to do is we just want to make sure that the green screen looks pretty well. Uh, in this case, I can, and it's it's pretty subtle, but I can see that there's a little bit of, of uh, green to the the uh, left of me on this screen. I can probably just adjust the, the tolerance a little bit and get rid of that just to make it a little bit smoother. And that's, you know, that was really quite easy. And again, I hear people talk about the importance of making sure that your green screen is well lit. And... I have a couple of Elgato key lights here. I've got a window. I don't do a lot to, to make this magic happen. And it's really great because, you know, I can insert myself into the action. I can become part of the, uh, of the, the software demonstration in this case. And I can actually, uh, you know, it's the nice thing about getting rid of your background entirely is that you can rearrange this however you like yourself within in this scene. So again, whether it's a vertical video and I'm at the bottom of the video or whether it's a horizontal video and I'm kind of, you know, maybe onto the right or the left of the, the action, I can certainly do that really, really easily. So again, I think sometimes green screens get a bad rap, but they're such a versatile tool. So if you're interested in that, um, I, I would encourage you to check it out because it is a really cool thing. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this either, but... <laughs> and it's a little weird because I literally have... Um, th this microphone here is the, the Shure SM7B. I found out that I could get a green cover for it. So now... If, and to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to use this very often, but it was just sort of a fun thing that, that uh, came into my world. So I can literally sort of... Uh, chroma key the microphone out of uh, out of the shot if I want to. So that's a, that's a really cool thing that you can do. All right. So I've also actually grouped um, the various cuts of uh, of the software demonstration as well. So there's a couple of things that we want to do to this, and I don't. I may have actually already done this on this project. In which case, um, and it looks like I have actually. So one thing about this, and I'll zoom in quite a quite a fair bit, is that. This literally had my email address at the top of it, and I didn't really want to share that with the world. So what I did was I came into my annotations, and the annotations is the place where you can bring in shapes and text and you know various effects. You've got arrows and all kinds of weird and wonderful things. You can obviously bring in your own images from, from elsewhere, and I'd probably encourage you to do that. Some of these annotations are a little, little bit basic. Um, but essentially from here, we can we can drag these things onto the toolbar. But one of the really cool things about this is the blur and highlight options. So we have the ability to blur out things and that's literally what I've done here. And again, you probably can't even see it because it's so subtle, but my email address was there and I just dragged uh, a blur region on here and I resized it to fit. And then, you know, I was good to go. We do also have the ability to spotlight a section. So again, I might just zoom out a little bit. 
So if I wanted to really bring attention to, in fact, let's zoom in a little bit more just to give you a sense. So maybe if I wanted to zoom into um, or highlight this, maybe just that section, you'll see everything else is sort of dimmed out after that. So I can come in here and I can, you know, I can draw attention to specific things. Um, just remove that. And, you know, we, we can we can change that however we like. There There is the ability to actually highlight things too. So, you know, if you wanted to highlight something with a traditional sort of pastel transparent color, that's an option as well. Um, and also pixelate. So again, if, you, if you're sharing something and you have to, you know, type in some sensitive information, that's a great option to actually get rid of these things. All right, cool. So I guess the other thing too, um, and I know that I'm going a little bit longer than I normally do, so I just want to get through a, a few more aspects of this before we wrap up today. But I've also grouped together my, my software demonstration down here. So one of the great things about Camtasia, and again, I've, I've grouped this together for a specific reason, and that's because I want to zoom in and zoom out, but I want to make sure that those zooms relate to every clip within this sequence. So if I go to the animations now, and often something I will do for this specifically is if I right click on this track and I go enable solo track, I'm only working with this track now. There's a little bit of a danger that if you try doing this with all your tracks enabled, you might move things around a little bit too much and it's not really what we want. So what I wanna do, I'll drag in a custom, uh, custom animation and I can sort of decide where I want this to be. And again, it's probably worth playing the video back to get a sense of where this will be. And if you, I don't know, maybe we'll zoom into this a little bit more so you get a better sense of it. But essentially, um, let's even just drag this track up so you can see it a little bit more clearly. And I might even just remove all empty tracks. There we go. So basically, the, the animations have uh, a start state and an end state. So the, the first arrow is, you know, the start of our animation and the second arrow is, you know, what happens when we get to the end of it. Camtasia will actually take care of the things that happen in between. So at the moment, if I go to the, to the end of this arrow and I'll go to the zoom and pan and what I want to do is actually zoom in maybe 150%. So now I'm, I'm sort of zoomed into a particular region. I can actually move this up because what I want to share is kind of at the top of this screen. So I can go there. And now if you, you see this, we'll go back to the beginning. You'll see that where this actually starts. And then it very subtly, um, so subtly zooms in. And again, if you actually want to make this a little bit, and I think I've, I've created... There we go. <laughs> Let me just try that again. So I created another animation by mistake. Let's go 150%. All right, cool. And if you want to make this transition a little bit longer, you can literally just drag out the points. And now we can go zoom in. And it'll, it'll jump to the, the section of the video that I really want to highlight. In this case, I probably, I've, I've moved a little bit too high up. So let's go back. And what I want to do, let's just go to the end point. And if I double click on the end point, it'll take me there. So I, I want to zoom in a little bit, but not, you know, I can, I can rearrange this till I'm happy with it. And even just sort of nudging the, the marker there will show give you a sense of how that works. So basically what I want to have happen is that I want to zoom in. I want to really focus in on the part of this that I want to share. Um, and I could make that even potentially bigger if I wanted to. Um, but I guess the other thing, because we want to we want to loop this animation, is that when I get sort of towards the end, I want to do the reverse. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring in a custom animation. And again, I'm I'm just really quickly doing this for demonstration purposes. But basically, at the end of this, we want to go back to 100%, just so that 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 animation is smooth when it loops. And again, I probably even just want to make sure that this is exactly where it was. Yep, cool. So again, we go from our start point, which is the 150% zoom. I'm sort of demonstrating some of the, the destinations that you can send to, and eventually it'll zoom out. 
And that way, um, it, it'll eventually get back to the 100%, and that way, it'll sort of match up with the beginning of the video. All right, so this, this whole session has gone a lot more quickly than I thought it was going to. So, a couple of things I'll touch on really briefly, and once you've, you've done those changes, we can disable the all solo tracks, and that'll show us everything on our project again. Um... Although I did, I actually moved this track above the green screen one just to show you how it works, but I've got to move it back or you won't see me. So obviously this works like other pieces of editing software. The things that are on top in your, your track list will be on top of the image. So if they don't contain any transparency, you won't see that. The other thing I want to show you is uh, the voice narration. So again... I think some people get really hung up on making sure that they record a perfect take and that they include everything they need. But the, the truth is, we've been watching TV and videos and movies for, for many years. We're very accustomed to, uh, you know, the voiceover narration. So what you can actually do in here is you can you can include a script or you can just start from, from scratch. You can come in, you can hit the start recording button. It'll give you the ability to talk through what you want to do um, and it'll save that as an audio file within your project and that way you can sort of, you know, cut it up and move it to where you want. So once I actually did my edits, I realized I'd cut out a section um, where I talk about uh, setting up the, the date and time. And I, I could have gone back in and just found that, but I thought, you know, it's not that important. Let's just keep with the, the, the vision we've got. I'll just record a little bit of audio. Um, I changed the, the transparency of myself within that clip to zero and the, the opacity up here is where you do that. And, uh, you know, I've just, I've just got that voiceover that pops in. Then I go back to me being on camera. So you kind of have that, that opportunity as well. So there's a lot you can do with this. I, um, very, very briefly mention, um, the, the captions. So captioning accessibility, it's, it's a big deal, um, we can certainly come in here and we can add new captions. Essentially how this works is you specify a duration, you'll hit the play button, It'll you'll hear yourself talking in this case. Um, and I can sort of type in what I hear. And then I can hit the plus button and I can do that again. So uh, you do have two options here. So once you've set up your your captions here that you can either export them burnt on the video or you can come up to the cog and actually export them as an SRT file to upload to places that support them like LinkedIn, Twitter and uh, YouTube. So you certainly have that option. The only thing I would say about the captions is you can't really move these around very much. So if you do want a specific part of your screen to include those, you'd probably be better off working with some of these anna annotations. So we can sort of drag some text on and we can change the font and reposition it there as well. But those are just, just a few things that you can do. And again, I love the flexibility of working at my computer and, and having the, the green screen and being able to repurpose, remix and repackage my content. So that's essentially what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for, for joining me if you are joining me live. Thank you for anybody who's watching this later on. I really do appreciate uh, the support that you've provided me. Um, I'd love you to, to subscribe to the channel you're watching this on or follow me. So, you know, whether you're on LinkedIn, um, Twitter, YouTube, where, wherever you happen to be. Um, I especially love it if you could head over to youtube.com slash learn live streaming. That's where a lot of this content lives. You can find out more about other software tutorial videos and some of the other shows that I do on that channel as well. And of course you can head over to, uh, johnlacey.com if you want to find out more, um, I'm, you know, I haven't actually planned this, but I think let's just, just throw that on the screen and I'll show you that again. So you can head over to johnlacey.com. You can learn more about the, the shows. Obviously this one is this one that I'm doing right now. So you can see that the, the time uh, has gone out, but I, you know, we talk about video meetings, um, answering OBS questions, uh, just getting started as a content creator and you can learn more about me. And we do have the links to all of the social media places down the bottom. So again, I hope you'll, uh, you'll join me for this ride um, and, you know, have fun creating things, uh, share your knowledge, get your message out there and, you know, just, just keep going. I know it can be a little hard being a content creator at times, but you've got this. 
So thank you again so much for joining me. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy your week. And I'll talk to you again next time. Thank you so much.